I'm welcoming you to our physics class. I want to go into some with you for the next for me, uh, for a couple of minutes on uh, physics particles. Uh, particle is very, very essential in all science uh, subjects because it carries a very large amount, a large amount of uh, max that I want to go into it. In uh, physics particles, uh, marking is based on the following sub -edits. We have observation. Observation, which is always in the tabular form. Then we have the graph. We have the slope. We have deductions. We have accuracy. We have precautions. We have short answered uh, questions. These are the areas where uh, marking is uh, based on. I want to go into each subheading, one after the other. First, observation. Like I said earlier on, observation is always in a tabular form. When you write your readings, you have to state it in a tabular form. And these are the steps you have to take into when you are writing the observation. Number one, you must not forget to write the units when you put the quantity. The units are very, very important. I mean the correct units. If you omit units or you write the wrong units, you the penalize for that. So units are very, very important. Then you have to be consistent with the way you record your figures. If you look at the table I have in front of me here, yeah, look at I, that's the angle of incidence. We are still going to look at, at the question. This is angle of incidence. Look at the number of decimal places. It is one throughout. That is what is meant by being consistent. Then another thing is uh, you have to avoid what you call systematic error when you make your, uh, when you plot your graphs. It's always applicable to when candidates fail to put in uh, the abbreviation, I mean, the in certain form, and they fail to put it when they are making their summations in the practical work. Then again, we have a disregard of instruction. In a place where a candidate uh, is asked to plot a graph, like I have here, this is D minus E on the vertical axis, and I have a I on the horizontal axis. If a candidate does otherwise, that is plotting I on the vertical axis and D minus E on the horizontal axis, such a candidate will be penalized for disregard of uh, instruction. The next thing we look at is what we refer to as uh, gross errors. This should also be avoided. Gross errors can be made. For example, what I have on the board there, you have to plot a graph of D minus E against I. And I have the values here. This is D minus E. This is I. If a candidate pulls exactly the way it is done without getting a skin, we have what you call gross errors. In such a case, the candidate will only be scored on axis. He has lost a lot of marks in recording. And in the slope too, it will not be given good mark because of uh, what he did. And funnily enough, his graph will be a very straight one, very straight uh, graph, thinking that he has done wonders. It's after he sees the result that he knows that, uh, he, knows that he has messed up in the exam. Then, when you read some values, maybe you are calculating, we have what we call uh, direct measurement, we have what we call evaluated measurement. When you read directly using your instruments, you ensure that you record to one decimal place, at least. Then when you have some values which are obtained maybe by calculation, by dividing or by multiplication, or the values you get directly from four tables, you ensure that those values are to three decimal places, okay? It's very, very important. 
Those are the things that uh, we have to take into when you look at uh, observation. Now to graph. For graphs to be reasonable, you have to ensure that you have a good scale. That is the difference between mathematics and uh, physics. In mathematics, you are given a scale to use. But in physics, you design your own scale. Okay? And your scale you use must be the one that you cover at least a very large uh, portion of your graph page so that the examiner can see your paper easily when they are marking. Origin of the graph is very, very important if we have to determine the origin. As we have here, we are asked to start from the origin. If you have to start the origin, when you are determining your, your scale, you must put the origin into consideration. Then on the scales, some prime numbers and some multiples are not advisable to be used by any candidate. Prime numbers like three, like seven, like nine, 11, 13, and so on and so forth. They are not expected by any candidate to be used when you are doing your practical work. So, still on graph, when you are plotting your graphs, look at what I put here. I put ASPL. A is for the axis. That's the axis. Are they well distinguished? Not putting Y axis or X axis, no. What are the quantities that are to be there? Then look at the scale. Are the scales normal? What do we have on the y-axis? Is it, is, it, is it scaled? If you look at it, this is scale. Look at the x-axis too. It is to, it is to scale. This is the one. one. Okay. So you have to look at the scale. And uh, from there, you plot your, you get your points accurately on the point not assume or not forcing your points to be on a, on a line you have considered. There are some odd lines there now. So when you are plotting your graph, you ensure that you don't force the odd points on to, to be on the line. Then we have the line of best fit. That is what is very important there. Line of best fit, if you look at the graph I've drawn here, I have line of best fit. It is not all the points that I have here that are on this straight line. There are some odd lines. There are some odd points that are not on that, uh, on that line. So to get line of best fit, you have to look at the best line. How do you get the best line? You look at the line in a way that the odd points, the points that are not on that line, are equal or nearly equal on either side. If you look at this graph now, I have one here, only one odd point is here. On the other side of the, of the line, I have two points here. The remaining are on a straight line. So the odd points are nearly equal on the other graph of the screen. Okay, then look at, uh, having gone about the graph, let's go to the, the slope. The slope is drawn, is a right angle triangle. You must draw the right angle. And the values must be taken. The values are taken from the graph we have drawn. The ratio, small change in y to small change in x is considered. You have the values of the triangle. Mark is called for that. So it should be very big to be seen by the examiner. Then when you read the values, you read accurately. This is on the y-axis. Then you have on the x-axis. You look at the ratio you get the value for the slope. So having saw that, by the time I come back for the class, uh, we shall continue talking briefly about this very one I have on the board for you. Thank you, and God bless. Welcome back to this class. As I, as I was explaining to you earlier on about what I have on the graph, this question, is from Waek, 1988, question number two. It's Waek question, 1988, question number two, is on optics. I performed the experiment. These are the readings that I got after performing the experiment. You are asked to plot, you are, it's on prism. Okay, that's why I gave the year of the question. You can go back and look at it, 1988, 
Question number two. You have the prism, triangular prism. You are, asked, you are given the angle of uh, incidence. To get that one, you must first of all get the normal. And the normal is always perpendicular to that surface. It is always at right angles. Having gotten the normal, then you can get the angle of incidence. These are the values for the angle of incidence. For every angle of incidence, you have the angle of deviation. That is your D. When the angle of incidence was 45 degrees, I got 39.9. .9. Look at the consistency in the recording of the values. Then the angle of emergent, you have it here. Then from the question, you are asked to find D minus E. We have it here. So what I'm saying is that when you see something like this, all the quantities that are available that you are asked to get must be on the table. And they, you must put the right units on them when you are plotting. And you are consistent with the way you dry down the number of decimal places. All these ones, they are values I measured directly. So they are to one decimal place. They are to one decimal place. This one is just simple subtraction. Assuming it were division or multiplication, it will be recorded to three decimal places. But because for the purpose of the class, I picked this one so that I'll be able to explain better to students. So having gotten the graph, I mean the table, from there I went to plotting the graph. You are asked to plot a graph of D minus E on the vertical axis and I on the horizontal axis. I did not disregard the instruction. So D minus E on the vertical axis, I on the horizontal axis. Then I, I look at the cost when I, I mean when uh, D minus E was minus 11.4. What is the value of uh, I? That's what we have here. And before I can get that, the first thing I do is to get a good scale. It is the scale that will make your work to be attractive to the examiner to see. It is the scale you have drawn that to show, it's like sending you out to see whether what you have done in the lab is reasonable or is not reasonable. So having gotten the scale, I got the scale based on the questions I was asked to do because I was asked to find the intercept. And if I've not chosen the right scale, it is possible that the scale I pick may not accommodate the intercepts. We are asked to find intercepts on both the x and y axis. So that is why this scale is this. So when you got, haven't gotten the scale, you now try to plot accurately on a point. I've done, about, I've done about the axis. I'm through with the scale. Plotting has to be very accurate on that same point. Then after the plotting, I have the line of a best fit, which is what I've done here. Then after this one now, the next thing is to talk about uh, precautions. Precautions are what you put in place for you to get good results. And whatever you want to write down should not be among what the examiner asked you to do. OK? For this one now, you can speak precautions. And when you write it, you put it in the potter's speech. For example, this one, I ensure that I had neat traces. It must be shown on your, on your paper. Is your paper dirty? Some people, they clean and clean and clean. Is it dirty? Is it clean? OK? I ensure that I had neat traces. That is one. Then I ensure that the optical pins were well spaced. You ensure that the pins are well spaced. OK? On this note, the other thing we have is short answer, which is, will be based on the particular you have performed. On this note, I think I'll be able to put you through and uh, to remind you of what your teacher must have taught you in the class. Uh, to run it up, I'm aware that uh, thank you and God bless.